Okay, so in this video we're going to integrate this function here, sine of x over x plus x cubed, and it's a definite integral from the whole of the domain. So it's negative infinity to infinity, and with respect to x, of course. Now we've got polynomial in the denominator and a trig function in the numerator. So we're trying to find some way of integrating this in uh, real numbers, which is what this is in, it's going to be a little bit tricky. So why don't we take a, uh, a go with uh, the complex analysis? Because sine of x, if we use Euler's identity, we know that e to the i k uh, t k equals cosine k t plus i sine k t. We put the k t's in the brackets. So that's Euler's identity there, and as we're dealing only with sine, we could perhaps take the imaginary part of the answer and the real part, because it's associated with cosine, maybe we won't need it. So let's write this integral here in terms of t. So now we've got infinity to negative infinity. So the parameters of integration ain't going to change. So now what we can do is we can put sine of t over, now let's factor this uh, denominator out, this could help us I think, t times 1 plus t squared and then dt. Okay, so now we're going to need to input this Euler identity here, e to the i t k. So in this version here we'll have k equals 1, so if I just write that up here, k equals 1. That's what this would be for this one. So you'd have an imaginary one there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this e to the i t k instead of this sine t. So now we have the integral of 1 over t 1 plus t squared and then I'm just going to write this in here now without the k because it's just 1 e to the i t dt. Okay, so now what we can do is now if we find some residues of this, we may be able to find the solution to this uh, integral here. And of course, not forgetting the parameters of integration. Okay, so now what do we do next? Okay, so what we need to do now is prove a couple of things before we can go on. So first of all, number one, this polynomial here, we'll call that P of T over Q, that's not G, Q of T, okay? The order of Q is two or more than the order of one. So this one here will be T cubed, and this one here is just, just, a, just a multiple. So what we say is the uh, order of q is greater than p by at least 2. Okay, and the second one we need is that this term here, t, that's not squared or cubed or so on and so on, it's, it's, it's going to be of order 1. So what we need is the pole on the real axis, i.e. t equals zero, that will be on the real axis. Pole on the real axis is simple, i.e. order one. So as these two conditions are met, we can now progress with this uh, technique here. Okay, now let's find the residues. So we need to factor this one out for a start. So we'll let f of t equal 1 over, okay, we've got t, and then we can factor this one out, so that'll be in the world, the complex world. So if we just write uh, up here, let t equal uh, x plus i y, so x is the real part, y is the imaginary part, we'll let t equal 
t plus i, t minus i. And if you multiply those out, you get t squared plus i t minus i t, then i squared with a minus will give us the plus one. So we know we haven't changed it. And then I'm just going to put in the e to the i t here. Okay, let's just make sure that's in the up here. Okay, right, so now let's find the residue. So the residues of f at zero. So if we take this one out here, so use the cover up method and then plug in zero for each of these. So we'll get e to the i times zero. This will disappear because it's the cover up method. Then we're left with zero plus i, zero minus i. Okay, e to the zero, that's going to just give us one. Then we've got zero plus i, so i and minus i, that's then going to give us minus one, uh, sorry, plus one. So then that equals one. So the residue of f of zero equals one. So that equals one. So now we need to find the residue of the t plus i and t minus i. So t minus i. So that's basically when the residue is i. So at i. So this equals e to the i times i. Plug in i for here. So i for here, we can plug in i. i plus i gives us 2i. And then this one will disappear. i plus i minus i is 0. So using the cover up method, that one will disappear. So then we're left with e to the i squared. Well, i squared is minus 1. So therefore, we can bring this e down into the denominator i times 2i in the denominator again, so that's 2i squared, which will then give us minus 2. So what we can do is we can put a minus 1 and then 2e. So that will give us the residue here. Then we want the residue at minus i. So for minus i, if we plug in minus i here, this one will disappear. So that equals e to the i times minus i. That's plugged in for that one. Then we've got minus i. This one here disappears and then it's minus 2i. So again, we're going to get a very similar answer to what this one is. So e to the i squared, or minus i squared, will give us plus, plus 1. So then we get e in the numerator. Minus i times minus 2i will give us positive 2i squared, which will then give us minus 2. So minus e over 2. Okay, so that's our residues. So carrying on with this technique here. So basically what we need is the integral of this one here. Infinity to minus infinity sine t over t times 1 plus t squared. So this will now incorporate our residues, dt. This equals, okay, so 2 pi i s plus pi i t. So two new variables here, an s and a t. So the s this one here, that equals the sums of the residues above the positive axis. So this is residues which are larger than zero. Okay, that's on the real, uh, sorry, on the uh, residues larger than zero. That's, um, let's see, let's put this on a graph somewhere. So what we're looking for is the residues in this part. Okay, so that's our real, this is our imaginary.
so the ones here won't count and then our t equals the residues when we're at zero so that's on this line so actually no one put actually zero i'll put the real axis so hence where poles on the real axis is simple so that's why we need this one okay so the residues we've got here are zero so we've got one here one at i so imagine this is i and then we've got one at minus i so that's our three residues now we don't need this one so this one's not needed but we need this one and this one so the residues above zero that's the one at i that is minus one over two e so s equals minus one over two e and the residue on the real axis so that gives us t t equals one okay so then that's going to give us our answer equals two pi i times s so that's minus one over two e plus pi i times one okay let's see if we can work this one out this two cancels out pi i times minus one so that's minus pi i but divided by e so that equals minus we can just put the i in front actually that will help us here i then minus pi over e that will take care of that and this one here is just pi i so plus i times i okay now let's just simplify this off here now so we can put this out front this one out back sorry this one up front put the minus in the middle but what we are interested in is because we got sine we're looking for the imaginary part so what is this value of this as an imaginary part so we don't need to write the i in anymore so then this will give us pi minus pi over e So that's going to give us our answer so what we can say let's just write it on here so the integral from negative infinity to infinity sine of x x plus x cubed dx equals pi minus pi over e that's our answer